Hi, I'm Phil Green, Queensland's Privacy Commissioner. Welcome to the launch of Privacy Awareness Week 2020. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. In addition, I would like to pay my respects to traditional owners and First Nations people worldwide, as we know the internet and information have no boundaries. I don't think that any of us would have predicted the challenges we'd been facing as individuals, as a society and as a global community right now. I'd like to assure Queenslanders that the Office of the Information Commissioner, OIC, is still working hard to protect the right to privacy and the right to access government information. These rights are fundamental to building trust between governments and communities whether it's through decisions being made or the services they deliver. We're taking a different approach to Privacy Awareness Week this year, or PAW as we like to call it. While we all practice physical distancing and adapt to rapidly changing environment, it's still important to connect, to share ideas, explore opportunities and to improve how we do things. On this front, our PAW 2020 launch will be done here, online through pre-recorded presentations from a line of of fantastic speakers who we'll introduce later. You'll see that our theme this year is Be Smart About Privacy. This theme refers to the various technologies that we're surrounded by, from smartphones, TV, home-assisted devices, security systems, cars, and smart city initiatives introduced by governments. Being constantly connected to the internet through smart tech increases the amount of data or personal information that's collected. It also exposes us to increased risks. With more people staying at home, working and studying and accessing services online, the risk to personal information is greater than ever. That's why I'm encouraging everyone to be vigilant and look out for yourselves and others who might not be as tech savvy. We have a range of tips on our website for both government agencies and the community to help protect personal information and stay safe online. The tips are easy to remember and spell out the word smart. I encourage you to discover these tips and see where you can build them into your daily routine. Last year was a big year for the OIC as we celebrated the 10 year anniversary of our privacy and RTI legislation. In 2020, we're building on that success and continuing to bring you timely and innovative content. It's critically important in times of rapid change and adversity that we remember fundamental human rights. The right to privacy is an important human right, now also recognised in the Queensland Human Rights Act, with new obligations for public sector agencies from 1 January. This pandemic has highlighted the need to respect privacy and use flexibilities in the Information Privacy Act to allow the sharing of information for public safety, including how to enable faster response times to help those in need. We continue to provide advice to and guidance for government on these areas. OIC is also part of a national COVID-19 privacy working group, ensuring privacy efforts and issues are coordinated across the Commonwealth, Australia, states and territories. Critically, Personal information exchanges in emergencies must remain balanced, proportionate, transparent and appropriately time constrained if we're to maintain trust in government and preserve the values of democracy in Australian society. From working from home to juggling home-based learning and connecting with friends and family online, we're accelerating our uptake of these online activities. While these present many opportunities to innovate and change the way we engage, we must all work together to ensure risks are managed. For public sector agencies conducting a privacy impact assessment on all significant projects and investments is a really important step in the right direction. A privacy impact assessment, or PIA, is a straightforward risk assessment tool ensuring privacy is well balanced and considered. Agencies should conduct this assessment as part of their core business activities. It's a simple tool that identifies the impact of a project or policy or new technology may have on the privacy of individuals, and it makes recommendations on how to mitigate those risks identified. 
As promised, we have an excellent lineup of guest speakers to launch Poll 2020. First, the Australian Information Commissioner and Privacy Commissioner, Ms. Angeline Falk, will present insights into national and international privacy developments and highlight the important work her office is continuing with ongoing surveying of public attitudes to privacy. This helps us to better understand how generations expect their information to be collected and used and respected in a rapidly changing world. Our second speaker is eSafety Commissioner Ms. Julie Inman Grant. Ms. Grant will talk about the need to protect personal information and the importance of keeping all people safe online. Following the presentations, you'll find some great advice and resources from the OIC as well as our colleagues. These include our working from home tips that will help keep privacy top of mind as we navigate this new way of working, studying and interacting. One critical thing to remember in the working from home environment is that the public expects government agencies to keep their information safe. Misuse or unauthorised disclosure can result in very serious consequences, as the Crime and Corruption Commission has pointed out in its Operation Impala findings and recommendations. Public sector agencies must continue to respect and uphold information privacy and the right to information in a way that builds trust and transparency. With your help, together, we can promote the value of protecting and respecting personal information and encourage a privacy-aware culture in Queensland. I wish you all a successful and happy Privacy Awareness Week. Stay safe, take care, and thank you for supporting Paw 2020. Hello. As Australian Information Commissioner and Privacy Commissioner, I am pleased to have this opportunity to join with the Office of the Information Commissioner Queensland to mark Privacy Awareness Week. So since we started planning for Privacy Awareness Week 2020, the world has changed dramatically. The COVID-19 pandemic has transformed the way we work and live and how we communicate. My thanks to Information Commissioner Rachel Rangiata and Privacy Commissioner Phil Green for inviting me. This week is a focal point of the year for my office as well and a chance for us all to shine a spotlight on the importance of protecting personal information and this is more critical than ever. For the OIIC's campaign this year, we'd always planned to focus on online privacy. And that topic has become even more relevant in the shift to the remote working arrangements and online learning and socialising that's been necessary to manage the spread of the coronavirus. In all the stories of tenacity, courage, heartbreak and innovation that are emerging from the health crisis, what also stands out to me is how the pandemic response is drawing more attention to our fundamental human right of privacy. As regulators and privacy professionals, we're not the first responders or frontline health workers who make those extraordinary contributions every day to protect and care for the community. So to each and every healthcare professional, we are indebted. And we're also indebted to the medical experts, the epidemiologists, the researchers and analysts who are guiding our response. But the collection and handling of personal information is also critical to containing COVID-19. It is part of addressing this health crisis and ensuring that we emerge from the pandemic with our rights protected. Privacy laws both enable agile and innovative responses to protect the public interest and protect our fundamental rights. And this has never been more evident. We're having to respond rapidly to privacy issues emerging in our new environment as government and business seek solutions to these public health and economic problems. So as privacy champions, practitioners and watchdogs, we all have a vital role to play in supporting the coronavirus response by ensuring privacy is safeguarded as an important precondition for achieving public health and economic outcomes. We know that protecting personal information and minimising impacts on our privacy is critical for the community trust and confidence needed to find and adopt solutions at speed. So this mission's driving even closer engagement between my office and data protection authorities around Australia and across the world. We are collaborating to find privacy protective solutions to the challenges we're all facing. 
It's why following the outbreak, my office and state and territory privacy regulators convened a national COVID-19 privacy team so we can respond to personal information handling proposals with national implications. Internationally, the Global Privacy Assembly brings together more than 130 data protection and privacy authorities from around the world. And its executive committee, on which I serve, is also meeting regularly to exchange information and experiences about how we can help protect privacy and public health globally. Inside the OAIC, we've set up a COVID task force, which is working closely with Commonwealth government agencies and business to provide guidance and keep privacy by design front of mind for new initiatives. We're also supporting employers and other organisations with advice on how to take steps to protect personal information in the shift to working from home. And these privacy by design resources include a guide to undertaking a PIA for remote working arrangements, FAQs and a step-by-step -step tool to guide you through the PIA process. As we make our way through this new world, we must also have a clear path for how we can find our way home when the emergency is over. We do have long-standing principles and methods to help guide us along this path. Privacy impact assessments, the test of whether the collection and use of personal information is a necessary, reasonable and proportionate solution to the problem. To the extent we can, we need to know how and at what point we will step back from the practices that are needed now, but will not be necessary when this crisis is over. This year, my office commissioned a survey of Australians on their attitudes towards privacy. It's a major survey that we carry out every three years or so to provide new insights into community attitudes and identify emerging privacy issues to guide our work. We expect to release a report in coming weeks, but in the meantime, I can share a few early insights with you into how Australians are feeling about privacy. The great majority, 87% of people, are telling us they want more control and choice over the collection and use of their personal information. One in three feel they are in control of privacy, while just as many do not. We also heard that three in five Australians care about data privacy, but are unclear what to do about it. And while over half of Australians always or often check a website is secure before providing their information and clear their browsing and search history, we are seeing fewer people taking these important steps to protect their privacy compared to 2017. Only one in five people read and are confident they understand privacy policies on internet sites. Generally, Australians don't review privacy policies because they're too long and too hard to read. They want privacy policies that are easy to understand and navigate, that use standard, simple language and give a plain English summary at the start. Compared to our last survey in 2017, we can also see that Australians are increasingly uncomfortable with a range of data practices. More than four in five think it's a misuse for an organisation to use information supplied for a specific purpose for another purpose or to ask for information that doesn't seem relevant to the purpose of the transaction, or to monitor their activities on the internet and record information on the sites they visit without their knowledge. So there's some very clear signals in here for regulated entities about what the community expects and where to improve privacy practices. Of course, it also informs the regulatory approach of my office. Across all our work, we're focused on giving individuals greater choice and control over the handling of their personal information. Over the coming year, our compliance and enforcement priorities will continue to include online platforms and social media. We'll be focusing on policies, notices, default settings and consent, and technologies that employ opaque information sharing practices. Security of personal information remains an ongoing area of regulatory focus. We will be providing additional guidance and taking targeted action that supports and incentivises sectors experiencing data breaches to take reasonable steps to protect personal information. Our third enforcement priority relates to the implementation of the consumer data right in the banking sector. This is a landmark reform that involves significant changes to information sharing practices in the financial sector 
and provides clear legislated choice and control to consumers to transfer their data to third parties securely. Together with the ACCC, we'll be monitoring and ensuring compliance with the consumer data right regulatory obligations, including undertaking assurance activities. Our survey also sought Australians' views on digital platforms and other online businesses and on children's privacy. And the responses that we've seen so far bring home the need to ensure that privacy safeguards keep pace with the speed of our transition to online life. This is particularly true for the most vulnerable in our community. Digital platforms have been a significant focus for regulatory reform in Australia, of course following the world leading inquiry led by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. And our survey supports this regulatory focus and these community views feed into a broader assessment of our privacy framework because 2020 is expected to be a significant year for privacy reform in Australia. As part of our focus on online platforms and social media, my office is preparing for the introduction of a binding privacy code for the sector, announced by the Australian Government last year. It will be aimed at improving individuals' ability to manage privacy choices through transparent policies and notices, ensuring people can give clear, informed and specific consent and protecting children and other vulnerable Australians by ensuring privacy is built into products and services by design. The government's also committed to introduce stronger civil penalties to deal with privacy breaches. And these changes intersect with a broader review of the Privacy Act announced by the government, which provides a critical opportunity to ensure our privacy framework can respond to new challenges in an increasingly digital and global environment. In considering innovative solutions to these issues, we should also look to international models and aim for global interoperability of our privacy laws. The closing of borders during the COVID-19 crisis has been no barrier for our personal information as it continues to travel around the world. As we rebuild our economies, minimising regulatory friction and enabling consumer confidence in the use of personal information will be a powerful engine for growth. And these privacy discussions and reforms are still needed and we shouldn't lose sight of them as we start to make the journey home after the COVID outbreak. Right now, there are encouraging signs that we will, in time, be returning to a more normal life. Like all of us in the privacy community, my office is focusing our resources to advise, guide and protect personal information and public health. Economic interests are important and will play a key role in the road back from the pandemic. What remains constant is the need to support and increase public trust and confidence in the handling of personal information. This is our long-term vision for privacy in Australia and this work has never been more important than it is now as we respond to the very serious challenges presented by the COVID-19 virus. I'd like to thank you all for the strong attention you're giving to privacy issues during this time and I wish everybody the best of health. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Inman Grant, eSafety Commissioner for Australia. I'm so sorry we couldn't get together to launch Privacy Awareness Week in Brisbane. Back when we planned this launch, imagine if someone had told us that the border between New South Wales and Queensland would be closed by late March. Our reality has shifted rapidly, but the crisis that prevented us meeting has also made the theme of Queensland's PAW 2020 campaign all the more urgent. Be smart about privacy. Education, business, public administration, and even social life have migrated online in response to the coronavirus threat. This unprecedented event highlights the urgency of my related message to you today. Be smart about privacy online. Now, what does this actually mean in practice? Most obviously, of course, it means things such as setting strong passwords, turning off Bluetooth and GPS connections when you don't need them. You probably don't need the eSafety Commissioner to remind you about that stuff. But let me assure you, our online safety hub at eSafety.gov.au has plenty of advice on how to manage those basic issues. 
Being smart about privacy online goes way past those basics nowadays, especially with the entire world congregating online in response to COVID-19. And these days, it starts when our kids are just bubs. Take the issue of sharenting. You can probably guess from the accent that my three children have grandparents overseas. Like most parents, I've always loved putting photos of my children online, along with proud postings about the exploits on their junior soccer fields of Sydney. But lately, I've become more conscious that the information I share with my children and about them becomes part of their lifetime digital footprint. At eSafety, we recommend that, even with quite young children, you have conversations with them before sharing their images online. Why? because it's modeling good behavior for them, and it won't be long before they need that model, which you and only you can provide. We're finding that poor internet behavior, including cyberbullying, is occurring at younger and younger ages. It is never too early to talk to children about good online citizenship and some of the risks that they face online. Having the chat, as we call it, is being smart about privacy online. When you are sharenting, be careful too about any identifying information in the photos you post, such as school uniforms or house numbers. This data can be used by people of malevolent intent. This brings me to an even more profound threat to our children and their privacy. At eSafety, we're finding that an increasing amount of online child sexual abuse material is being elicited remotely from children using their connected devices. That's why it's so important for parents to use the parental controls on the apps and games that young children are using. And in this day and age, this includes what we call the Internet of Things. The very toys we give our children to play with can be used by predators to gain access to them. In particular, these parental controls can be set to make sure that anyone who contacts your child on a game or app is somebody they already know. But as I am always telling parents, no parental control is as effective as a parental presence. When parents co-play with their children, and when children and teens use the internet in a public part of the house, when mom and dad are coming and going, many of the risks are mitigated. Children, of course, are not the only vulnerable group whose privacy online and safety can be violated. At eSafety, we operate a reporting service for victims of image-based abuse. Australians who have had their intimate images shared without their consent. It's hard to imagine a more serious breach of privacy. Since October 2017, we've received more than 2,300 reports of image-based abuse and been successful in more than 90% of cases in having the images reported to us removed from the internet. But the prevalence of image-based abuse should be a warning to all of us to be highly cautious before we share any images of ourselves that we would not want the world to see. Online safety is intersectional, and so is online privacy. By this, I mean that vulnerability can be multiplied for individuals and particular groups. This is why we seek to provide support and resources for women, and especially women from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander backgrounds, who experience what we call technology-facilitated abuse. We are seeing the increasing use of digital technology to control, stalk, threaten, and harass women and children, especially those suffering domestic and family violence. The ingenuity of some forms of tech-facilitated abuse is horrifying, including hacks that cause a vehicle to stop automatically if it's driven outside a set perimeter, and then there are the online privacy risks to women of dating apps, which are likely to become even more popular in the age of COVID-19, when so many are feeling lonely, anxious, and isolated. Predators on these apps may be seeking to use women and discard them, or even worse, use women to gain access to their children. The advice we give women includes strictly limiting the amount of personal information they put online, a good idea for internet users generally, taking their time getting to know someone online before meeting them in public, and when they do meet them for the first time, doing so in a public place with a backup plan if things do not go well. Can I just stress that all of these topics, which lie at the intersection of online safety and privacy, along with many more, are covered in detail at our online safety hub. In a crisis such as this pandemic, we learn a lot about who we are as a community and as a country. For instance, we've learned that it's not just the Melbourne Cup that stops a nation. Far from stopping, 
E-safety is upping the ante because the threat landscape is so much wider when internet use is multiplied. I'm sure exactly the same is true for the Office of the Information Commissioner in Queensland, and I am delighted to join with you to declare Privacy Awareness Week in Queensland officially launched. And I hope that we meet soon. In the meantime, stay safe and well, and stay safe online.